on important. So the hyphen tells us that it's a file, not a directory. Again, suffixes in Linux have very little meaning, except for outside of the GUI and perhaps via the file program, which attempts to detect a type which doesn't wholly rely upon, or even largely rely upon the suffix. So you could name a directory 1 million dot text. For example, let's find our non-privileged shell. We know because the shell terminates with a dollar sign. And in our home directory, let's make a directory 1 million dot text. Now, because the file exists, it throws an error. Let's try to make something calling it something that should not exist, 10 million dot text. And if we LSLTR, we now have a directory colored in blue named 10 million dot text, which has a leading D for the classification and permissions that we've yet to discuss. So you can name directories with suffixes that resemble files which is why you have to be very careful when identifying them visually. So on to the bits that are represented in the file permissions that we see here. Now, to the right of the leading bit, the three bits that you see, in this case, RW hyphen, represent permissions that are associated with the owner of the object. So the first three permissions bits, or bits two, three, and four, or if you're indexing at zero, 1, 2, and 3, however you want to index it, are permissions that are tied to the owner. So, let's just paste this, and these are the owner bits, which you can call 2, 3, 4, if you'd like, or 1, 2, 3, depending on whether you index at 1 or 0. We also see the same bits for the group owner. So we'll reflect it. Group owner bits, which are bits five, six, seven. And in the final block of bits, we see r hyphen hyphen, which represents other or everyone. Other slash everyone, meaning everyone else bits, which occupy positions in this case if indexed from 2 originally, 8, 9, 10, because there are 10 bits, after all. So the bits are broken out as follows. And when the kernel evaluates access to various objects, like files and directories, it has to process these bits based on the currently logged in user and any group permissions and whether or not the user is attempting to access under the everyone bits section. Now each of these sections have repeating permissions and values associated with them. So permissions values. When you see a read, for example, or R, its value is equal to 4. When you see a W or a write, its value is equal to 2. And X or execute, its value is equal to 1. This is equal to read. This is equal to write. And for scripts or for directories, this is equal to execute. The bits are octal, which means the maximum value that can be stored is based on a total of 8, or 0 through 7. And as a consequence, when you tally this up, 4, 2, 1, and you turn on all of the bits, for example, you have a total of 7 in the event that all bits are turned on. To calculate bits, you simply sum per section, whether it's the owner or group or everyone else, the bits that are present. So R and W is simply read 4, write 2 for a total of 6. So analyzing the bits above, this is equal to 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. Similarly, for the group owner bits, it's equal to 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. And for the everyone or other bits group of 3 bits, it's equal to 4 plus nothing, which is equal to 4. So effectively, the permissions on 1 million dot text amount to 6 for the owner, 
six for the group and four for everyone else, or six, six, four. That octal notation can be used with a tool named change mod to assign permissions, or optionally, the English alphabetical representations, RWX, may be used. Either or may be used, and they're understood by the appropriate tools. So you're largely dealing with read, write, execute with respect to permissions that are associated with the owner, the group owner, or everyone else. So let's just note that the tool that's used to change these permissions is called change mod or change mode. It's really to change the octal mode on the particular object or objects in question. So use change mod to influence permissions on files or file objects, which of course includes directories, etc. Change mod changes the octal mode. So it changes the octal mode. Octal meaning 8 with permissions maxing out at 8, indexed at 0. Now by default, let's just note, see, default permissions are inherited from the umask variable, which is defined when a user logs in. So in a shell, for example, let's echo umask. Now when it's not set, it defaults to two defaults for files and or one per file or directory which amounts to the creation of directories and files with specific permissions, 644, 755. So there are defaults that are assumed when you log into a shell environment if the variable is unset. There's also a specification in login.defs. Let's take a look at etc login.defs to see if we can extract the default umask that is set on a per user basis and it's defined here as 077 and it tells us also that the permission mass will be initialized if it's not specified to 022 which means directories get created with 755 and files with 644 so the umask governs the default permissions but of course as an owner of an object you can always change the default permissions to something that's more suitable using change mod or using the GUI environment. But the UMask when set will govern the permissions that are associated. So if we were to set the UMask to something else in a given shell and then begin creating files and, and or directories, then the permissions would be influenced based on the definition of that UMask variable. So we've got read, write, execute for a total of seven per any group, owner, group, or everyone else. How do we influence these permissions? Let's take a look at what's happening in our home directory to see what may be of interest. Perhaps we'll look at the items 1 million star and notice that they all seem to wear the same permissions. 664, read write, that's 4 plus 2, read write, 4 plus 2, that's for the owner and for the group, and read for everyone else, 4. So 664 appears to be the default permissions assigned to these objects which means the owner Linux CBT has read write access any member of the group Linux CBT which defaults to the user Linux CBT on the Red Hat system has the same permission and everyone else may read the content but not make changes and of course that can be tested so to test that and then change the permissions let's try to read 1 million dot text as a different user so in a separate shell, we'll SSH as Linux CBT4. Let's just be sure that the user can actually log into the system with a valid shell, and indeed 4 can. So let's SSH as Linux CBT4 at localhost. This will give us a shell environment as this user. And once in, we're now in our home directory. If we LSL one level up, we see that Linux CBT's directory may not be entered by anyone else other than the owner. That means if we try to evaluate the contents of that user's directory, we're not able to. However, 
What if we copied the content to some other directory and made the file available with the same original permissions? So let's change into Linux CBT and let's copy 1 million dot text temporarily to forward slash temp, a directory that everyone has access to. Forward slash temp now contains a copy of 1 million dot text, but the permissions are set to root because temp has the sticky bit set. So let's copy it to the root directory. Let's see what the permissions are on root. Root's version of 1 million. Same thing, so we'll remove that version of it. It's writing it as root. So we'd have to chown it. We're not ready to use chown just yet, or change mod it and ch chown it. And we're not ready to use that just yet. So 1 million dot text now exists in temp, and it's read writable by root, readable by the group root, and readable by everyone else. So as either user, we can, since root now owns the file, attempt to interact with the file. So let's nano temp 1 million dot text as a user like CBT4. So this contains the contents of the file. Let's try to add a new record such as zero and save the changes using control X. Permission denied. We're not able to make changes to the file. We can read the file, but we can't change it. So let's exit and then try the same as the user Linux CBT who originally owned the file, but no longer owns the file. So 1 million dot text, it's going to load. Let's try to add a new entry and then try to save the changes. Permissions are checked whenever disk IO is performed. So when nano loads the content into memory, you can make all the changes you want. But it's not until you attempt to write the changes to the disk that it will matter. So we'll not attempt to save the changes. So now the permissions are written on the file in such a way that neither user can make a change to the file. So that leads us into the tools that allow us to change these permissions, such as change mod. So let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit about change mod. The file sitting in temp is owned by root. So if we change mod, this time making it 666, meaning read, write, read, write, read, write for everyone, temp, 1 million dot text, all of a sudden, either user Linux CVT or Linux CVT4 or any other user will have access to write to the file. But only the owner of the content can change the file in this way. And since root owns the content, root is able to change the file in that way. Let's reconfirm and let's take a look. That's going to be temp 1 million dot text. So it's still owned by root, but now everyone, because of bits 8, 9, and 10, or 7, 8, and 9, depending on how you index the bits, is read-writable. So back in as Linux CVT4 for a moment, let's add a new record 0. Let's save the changes, and it's saved. That means when we reopen the file, or if we head it, let's head the first two lines from temp, 1 million dot text, Indeed, it contains zero. Let's try it as the user Linux CBT. Temp, one million dot text. And it loads. And let's put zero, zero. Save the changes. And now the user is able to change the file. And let's head it as well. In fact, since we have it in our command history in this shell, let's just head it here. And there we see zero, zero, zero. So now the content can be manipulated by any user, which is not necessarily a good thing, but it demonstrates how you use change mod. If you know the octal notation, you can change the mode. Now let's change the mode using the non-octal notation, change mod. So this is 666 associated with the file. It's easiest to use this notation, but you can use other notations such as the removal of permissions, specific permissions like write, read, execute using minus 